Hey guys, this production music live with a quick tutorial. We are looking at an early version of Ableton 10 here and I've opened up the new wavetable synthesizer down here and quickly close it. What we are going to do is create a new MIDI track here and I'm going to do this from scratch, loading up this instrument wavetable onto this MIDI track. and. Um, then I'm going to copy my pad sound MIDI file. I'm playing this MIDI information here. And let me quickly play it. Without the first channel. Okay, and this is the init sound of the wavetable synthesizer. I'm going to bring down the volume, the output volume here to the right. So, and this is basically our init patch. We're only playing a sine wave here with the first oscillator. We have two oscillators here and another sub oscillator here. And we're not going to try to make anything complicated. We're just going to make this little background pad sound here and see how wavetable works. Quickly turning off this filter, a high cut and a low cut or low pass and high pass filters. And here we have our envelopes and if we open up our wavetable, we get a better overview. We have our two oscillators here next to each other. Here we have the amplitude envelope and two more envelopes. We have two LFOs here to the right and our sub oscillator up here. And now I'm going to play around with the first oscillator and switch through different basic shapes of wavetables while playing this MIDI. I'm going to stay here around 50% of this wavetable. Works pretty much like Serum actually. And um, I'm going to put in the second oscillator and just look for some, like here's our categories and here we have our wavetables. I'm going to pick up the white noise from the basics. And uh, well, you know, it's going to be white noise, so doesn't really make a big difference where we are going to be in the wavetable. Just going to bring down the output gain a little here. Okay, and now we have to work a little bit with our amplitude envelope here because it should be a pad sound. It should not be so attacky in the beginning. So I'm bringing the attack time up here. That's too much. Maybe 15.5 milliseconds and bring up the sustain level as well. Still don't like the way the beginning of the sound uh, starts. So we have a slope here. We can actually determine the slope of our attack. If you see this little dot moving, you can also touch it here. we can make our release time a little longer here. Okay, so let's use this as our sound base. And a nice thing in this wavetable synthesizer is the unison section over here. So right now we are allowing for polyphony, maximum number of voices is eight which is interesting if you're playing such a full chord because here, I think in this chord, I'm actually playing eight notes. So a ninth note would not work, at least not if you're only using one wavetable synthesizer. And let's select unison um, shimmer, maybe. I heard that one was going to be good. Three voices now, amount 30%. Switching around with the amount, 
zero. Okay, so it sounds pretty nice, around 30% and number of voices free is good for now. We also want to mess around with our filter now. We have our filter section here. Activate the first one. And as we had it in April, in Ableton 9 already starting from 9.5 we have different filter types here I'm going to play around with OSR and I'm going to select 24 decibels per octave And now you hear this, maybe you hear this little click in the beginning of the attack here. And I like we are still working with an early version of Ableton 10, that's the beta. And I think this is a bug because um, we, if we are playing only four voices, we don't have a click. If we are playing five or more voices, we have a click. Let me check for that. Let's actually take off, you know. So we have only three voices playing here and four playing here. And let's see if we can recreate this click. So this is a bug. So um, higher than four voices right now with Wavetable generates this little click. Um, so just so we know this, it should be fine in the final version. You should be able to achieve your sound in that way. For the time being, a workaround would be just taking um, an audio effect auto filter, switching that filter off here and um, doing the same thing here. So that wavetable filter is still a bit buggy at the end of the development stage of the beta and the final launch of Ableton 10. I guess this will work just like the auto filter. So let's pretend we did um, use the clean filter here and put it on to uh, 24 decibels per octave slope and it works like that. Also, this echo is new in Ableton 10, so let's quickly drag one of these instances up here. It's a new delay plugin, and let's quickly look for some cool sound. Um, tape, tape delay, long tape, tape reverb space. Let's check this one. So that's an early delay and I, what I like about it is we have this docking threshold here where we can decide while we're playing our sound, please don't play delay, play it once we're finished playing our source sound. So you go down in this threshold here and it comes afterwards. If I dry wet it up a little more output here. <laughs> so it's a bit late. But sometimes this is exactly what you need. So um, kind of cool. I'm, I'm bringing it back so it plays over the chords already. And it's too loud now. I'm bringing this output back.
Okay, let's still mess around with our first oscillator here. Maybe play a bit, a bit around with the wavetail position. Actually, I could also try to bring up the sustain completely so we have a very stable sound. And shorter attack. So play around with various filters, PRD maybe. So this is very clean. I really like the sound of this um, little device here. It's very powerful. And if we compare it to Serum, we can't really put external wavetables in here so far. Maybe it will, add it in, will be added in the future. I don't know about that. But like a benefit of not having as many options here is very low CPU usage. And now imagine you could use such a powerful little a synthesizer in the box when playing live. That should be super cool and a lot of fun. Alright, so that's it for this little video here. If you want to learn more about how to write such chord progressions here, check out our course on harmony and chord progressions. And if you enjoyed this little tutorial, subscribe to our channel, visit us on productionmusiclife.com, our website supporting this channel, and I hope to see you next time. Mm -hmm.